Are you all ready to join me today in our trip to outer space? Come along quietly or not. I will talk to you of art. For there is nothing else. Some artists make a hook. Yes. Bite the pot. I'm in that, that lineage and that tradition of pen and ink illustrators. They don't say comic books anymore, they say graphic novels. Like this morning I was just having some cereal and just looking at the milk carton with the design of the milk carton was so bad, it was so offensive. I mean, high art, low art, it was kind of it's just about money. Yeah. It's all about what, how much it's worth that it makes it high art or low art. Hello folks and welcome to another episode of the Planet Shivers podcast. I'm Albert Shivers and today on the show... We got visual artist, illustrator Heather Lee is coming on to discuss her upcoming show. I'll tell you, Heather did digital illustrations of the first 22 tarot cards in the whole deck of tarot cards. She did the first 22, which she's going to go into why 22 and the meaning behind that. But these 22 pieces, along with other pieces, are going to be in a show this coming weekend that she's having at the Create and Be Art Studio here in Stroudsburg. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. And I was really hoping to get her on the show. I had seen Heather's work back in either January or February, before everything hit the fan at an art show, and it really popped off the wall. It jumped out the wall to me. And since then, I've been interested in talking with her about her art. And then here comes this show, and it just seemed like the perfect opportunity. So I'm going to go through my spiel here, and then we're going to get to Heather and that whole conversation. So first, I want to announce officially to you on video the new Planet Shivers logo, which I'm very excited about. I've been secretly under the radar working on this thing all the last week, planning on how I want it to look, because once I put it out, that's it. Once you throw something out into the world whether it's art or a piece of music or whatever it is, it's out there. So you want to make sure you got everything in place without going too crazy and beating yourself up too much. It's that happy medium that an artist needs to find where you are willing to just like go, okay, I'm done screwing with this thing. And that's sort of where I was at. So... I've been getting a lot of good feedback on it. I'm glad those of you who like it, like it. Um, There could be some more. You know, we're going to get new cards made up, and who knows where it can go. Also, the new Patreon page is finally up. I've been jumping through these Patreon hoops for like two weeks now, but it's finally up. Patreon.com slash Albert Shivers. You can see what's going on with the podcast, what's going on with art. I'm going to be posting... A lot of progress shots and the completed work shots on Patreon as well as on Instagram. Again, patreon.com slash Albert Shivers. You can go there, check things out. And if you want to donate, you can donate. No forcing or anything like that. Everything is going to be available for free and you could donate if you like. None of this holding back on you. You're getting it all and if you want to donate, you can. Going to have new episodes of Insomnia Art coming out this week. Two of them, as a matter of fact. And the first one is going to be a continuation of my cartoon of Ed Norton being eaten by the sewer alligator. If you'd like to hear the crazy story behind the idea of that art, go to Insomnia Art. I believe it's episode 14. And you can check out my whole story. In part two, I'm going to be adding in all the color. I did all the ink work in the first one. I'm adding all the color in the second one. So if you want to watch, if you want to watch a grown man color, then you can check that out. And I'm also going to be doing one that's going to be heavy on the ink, black and white, cross hatching, stippling, which is just the dots, cross hatching the dots, and ink outline of a more realistic portrait. It's going to be part two of the episode. I don't remember the number, but it's going to be part two of the episode drawing fish. So going to have a lot of things going on this week. I'm going to just keep giving you guys things to look at if you want to look at them. Finally, um, 
I've been working on an old movie of mine. If you guys are new to the Shivers thing, I started off doing movies um, in college, and I kept doing movies once I left. And it was a lot of fun, and I got real artsy and really met a lot of friends of mine who are still friends of mine today. It was a fantastic social outlet. But it got to the point where I had things, the wheels were coming off this last project, and I got sick of it. I was at a crossroads myself, and I chose to delve 100% into art. At that time, for me, I didn't know which direction I wanted to go in, but I also knew that if I was going to give 100 to make it in something, you got to give it 100%. And at that time, I was 50-50. And I felt as though I wasn't going to get anywhere doing both, and I chose art. Why I chose art? I chose art because it was more simple. It, it depended more on me than movies did. Movies, there's variables, there's different people you got to worry about. Who's late, who backs out, who doesn't know the lines. And this was all for free. I wasn't able to pay anybody. All I was able to offer them was the invisible exposure, which every artist now at this point wants to shoot themselves in the head over. People promise you exposure. Three people see what you're doing. The fourth person destroys it. Eh, there's your exposure. But in any event, I'm getting off track. Um, I chose to go with art. With always the intention of taking this half-finished movie and finishing it. Well, lately I found the time and I dug that back up. The working title right now is Mando Alberto... There's a lot of good people in it, and there's also a lot of stock footage. So the premise of this movie is to go through a human mind, in this case my mind, like an uncontrollable television that keeps changing the channels on you. Okay? So I don't know if this movie is going to make it to YouTube, where it's going to be able to be seen, because there's a lot of stock footage, there's a lot of things, you know. There's clips of shows, clips of movies clips of music, all intertwined. And for me to do this movie the way I wanted to do it, it's a short, it's probably only going to be like 25 minutes. For me to do it the way I wanted to do it, I couldn't worry about all this silly crap. I couldn't worry about a Pepsi can in the background. That was another reason why I stopped messing with movies. Because it just got bogged down. I wanted to make art stuff. You know, I want to make art. I didn't want to worry about copyright and using shitty music because it's free or worrying about a Pepsi can that's out of focus all the way in the background and all the technical things and you know these filmmakers who would get competitive with their cameras and what kind of mic are you using oh I got da, 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 da. it didn't matter I just wanted to film cool shit and make art that's all I wanted to do so it was a very a varying list of reasons why well, I backed out of film, but I still enjoy doing it, and I want to finish this picture, but it, we're going to figure out how you'll be able to see it. This is my long-winded way. We'll figure out how you're going to be able to see it. A lot of new art stuff coming up. I've been ex looking more into like old pinup art and old pinup models that weren't really popular. We all know Betty Page. We all know the usual suspects. They've been drawn to death. People dress like them. But like, I got really interested in who the ones were who were a little weirder, a little more underground, not necessarily more dirty or, or definitely not like s and Just interesting. And I found through digging all these crazy fun Instagram pages that cover this sort of thing, both like photography and in like visual art, be it illustrations or paintings or, you know, whatever it could be. And I want to dive deeper into combining the pinup world with cartoons. There are a lot of amazing artists who are doing that now. And I'd like to take my style and my deal and tr give it a shot myself. And, and, and weave a little bit of a brew of 
my style mixed in with some new things. You know, it's like, it's always important to just keep trying to evolve, evolve, evolve. Today is the big choose day. Everybody's making the big choose today. You know what I mean. I hope you are very excited and happy with whoever you choose. And afterwards, maybe on the way home, you stop and also choose a good bagel. So with all that stuff out of the way, let's get to the guest, artist Heather Lee. I was so excited again to have this conversation with her. It went great. And I'll talk to you on the other side of the interview. Today on the show is kick-ass illustrator Heather Lee, who's got a new art show coming up at the Create and Be Art Gallery in Strasbourg. How you doing, Heather? Thanks um, for doing the show. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Definitely. Definitely. So let's jump right into the show you have coming up. Um, it's a show that's going to, and if I pronounce anything wrong, just correct me. But um, it's a show featuring the first 22 cards which would be the major ar- arcana. arcana of a tarot deck. Yes. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, they're basically like the face cards from like a regular deck of cards. So it starts with the fool, and you have the magician, you know, the high priestess, so on and so forth. But they're the major cards that I think most people think of when they think of a tarot card deck. And it's the start of it. And I thought it'd be interesting just to see how the first 22 went we'll see if i make a whole deck i feel like that might take a while there's like 78 cards right but we'll see well 22 is a is a good undertaking too i can imagine yeah it took about four months and i don't think i've ever made so many pieces in that amount of time it was definitely interesting so from what i don't know too too much about tarot i know a little bit but you, so you mentioned that they reflect like a playing card deck? Kind of. Situation? Kind of. Uh, like, as you move on through the decks, the deck, you have, uh, you know, the, the sword cards, you mm-hmm. have the, the wand. So they eventually do break down into four suits, like a uh, deck of playing cards. So that's kind of how I always kind of tell people if they're not sure about what a tarot deck is. That's kind of how I reference it. Gotcha. How long have you been working on this series? I started, I actually started about July 1st, because mm-hmm. uh, the I first started telling my friends about it July 4th. I started saying, oh, you know, this is what I started doing, uh, this tarot deck thing. And uh, the first card I did was the Fool, which is the first card of the deck. And originally I figured I'd do the Fool, maybe the Magician. And then just kind of leave it at that. I wasn't sure if I was actually going to do a full deck. But after showing, you know, friends and family the first couple cards, and there was such a positive response and such a big response, I was like, okay, maybe I should uh, push forward. Yeah, no, that's awesome. How um, did you intend when you first started, like, the medium? What, What medium are you working in? Well, they started off as sketches and drawings, and then I ended up putting them uh, onto my iPad mm-hmm. just so I could get that that same basic look throughout the whole series, like you know, like a deck of cards with like the border and stuff, just to keep them very, you know, together and very similar. Um, I generally work in acrylics, and what I've done with this series is I've combined a digital medium and a traditional medium. Okay. So they've been printed out as digital prints, and then I've painted over top of them with different kinds of metallic uh, paints, okay. just to kind of highlight certain things and make them you know, a little more pop. Mm-hmm. So I've been really trying to play with the two mediums, because I really think, especially nowadays with how technology is evolving, it's really nice to bring like the old with the new and kind of combine those to almost make a new kind of style. Yeah. Well, that, that, I think, is the way that, like, artists have to go. Mm-hmm. Is we've been so, like, beaten over the head. This is my opinion, anyway. But we've been beaten over the head with what styles we need to work in. Mm-hmm. And sort of pigeonholed. So th- I love the idea of combining things. I try to do it also. 
is there a special kind of paper? So when you print those prints out digitally and then you're going to paint, uh, paint over them, mm-hmm. is there a certain kind of paper? We, we uh, used a, a hard stock photo paper, matte photo paper. Um, mm-hmm. I was worried a glossy photo paper might be hard to paint on, so we stuck with matte. Uh, my husband helps me make the prints. He's a big okay. help, great guy. Uh, and that worked the best. So it's a heavy paper, matte, and just uh, nine, uh, 13 by 19 is the size of all the, the prints. Okay. So they're pretty, they're pretty decent size. No, that's, that's a real good size. And it is very, that, those dimensions are very card-like, mm-hmm. which, is, which is cool. Mm-hmm. They're basically like giant cards, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then at what point did this become an idea for a show? I think I had done maybe three or four cards and I'd posted the, I think the first three on my Instagram and that's when uh, Courtney saw it and commented and she said, Hey, I think we might need to talk about a show here. And that's when I got into my head like, Oh, this, this could be a thing. And then after talking to her, I was like, okay, I got to sit down and really like figure out how I'm going to get these 22 pieces done in that amount of time. Mm-hmm. So I tried to kind of sketch out the first, you know, another few just to see, okay, is this even doable for me? Right. <laughs> Cause I do have a three year old. So that had to, I had to take that into account too. Definitely. So. Definitely. <laughs> do you have a preference now that like you've been working a little more with digital stuff? Do you have a preference between doing the acrylic paint or doing your paintings or digital? You know, I like them both for different reasons, okay. and you can do different things with both of them. Um, the one thing I like about digital is probably just because, again, I have a three-year-old who likes to be involved and play with paint as well, mm-hmm. so it's a little easier and not as messy with the digital art, and I don't have to worry about him trying to help. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's just something about the traditional like painting on canvas, I think, just sometimes like pops or it just kind of speaks to people a little bit better because I think there is still a little bit of a prejudice against digital art in a way Mm -hmm. if you know what I mean people don't see it as I don't want to say as important as traditional but they don't understand how much work goes into digital as you know the same as traditional Mm -hmm. because sometimes I do feel like I spend more time on my digital work than I do my traditional because it's easier to change things and change colors, right. you know, I kind of stress over every little detail even more so. Mm-hmm. I gotcha. Do that make sense? I've not gone too deep into the digital world yet. Not that I wouldn't. But I like the relationship, like the physical relationship of working on, I don't paint too much my more mm-hmm. drawings and collage work. But... In the little bit of digital that I've done, like it is almost like learning again Mm -hmm. from complete scratch, because it is this whole different world. I was I don't even I think I was using like an uh, at the time even which was a couple years ago an old version of Photoshop, Mm -hmm. and I'm learning about the layers, and it was so like Greek to me because I had delved into like okay I'm gonna do this the what I was the regular way Mm -hmm. of doing it by hand. So it, it is a completely different world than like all sorts of different things to know and all like someone was like oh use the shortcut key is I was like what <laughs> so but it is you know it's it's impressive and I was looking through um, what you have posted on Instagram up to this point and so far they're looking awesome thank you thank the you. cards so it should be a great show yeah it took a while definitely to get used to uh, the digital. Just because, like you said, there's so many layers and different techniques and stuff. But, uh, you know, Google's a wonderful re- resource. And after, like, just looking up tips and tricks and mm-hmm. just kind of trying different things out myself, I was able to kind of figure out how to make it work for my style. Because I think my style in particular translates just as well in digital as it does in acrylic because I do like those defined lines and those solid colors. Yeah. So I think it translates easy, you know, from one or the other. What sort of got you started in art? That old, old good old question. 
I don't know. I've just always done it, and my parents always just, you know, let me kind of do my thing mm-hmm. and encouraged it, you know, encouraged me to be creative uh, and let me go to, you know, painting classes and things, and I just always liked being able to try to at least try to draw out what's in my head onto paper and you know as I got older I went from just drawing and markers to paint and so forth and so on but yeah I've just always just done it you know since I was little gotcha now I could I could totally relate to that did you do anything um like in school art classes more than just the average um, I mostly just did art classes, and then I had an after-school painting class that I went to as well, but nothing really through the school. I usually just kind of wanted to skip off and play with my friends and hang out in town, and, you know, I went to Stroudsburg, so okay. we'd leave school and just hang out on Main Street all afternoon, you know? Mm-hmm. So. It was, see, I, I, I came here about 10 years ago, a little bit less, and when I came here, it was a fairly artsy town. There was a lot going on. Um, and then, it, to my my view, it sort of petered off a little bit. So, growing up here, did you find a lot of art inspiration or a lot of uh, things around here that kind of kept you going on that path? I mean, Stroudsburg really has evolved over the years. I remember when I was younger, there wasn't really a whole lot going on. And then as the years have gone by, you know, the Sherman opened up and started getting bands. We started seeing a couple more art galleries in town. I don't know how much that really influenced me. I was kind of always in my own little world. I was big into movies okay. and stuff and, uh, and TV shows and kind of weird stuff. So I think that influenced me more than my outside environment. Okay. Have you brought your interest in movies into your art? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that definitely influences me a lot, just even by color schemes or just ideas. Uh, I like... Like some, you know, off-the-wall kind of weird movies. Uh, Neil Gaiman's Mirror Mask, if you've ever seen it. That's I a, haven't, but okay. That is a highly recommended one. It's very strange. Or like Labyrinth, you know, okay. Dark Crystal, things like that. Uh, I've always, you know, caught my attention. Uh, even movies like uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Okay. You know, how um, the main girl character, her hair is constantly changing colors and... Mm-hmm. That always caught my attention because a lot of the times I'll paint my characters with very vibrant hair or something. So, hmm. and I think it is like a it's very fertile when one form of art is inspired by another form of art. Mm. You know, rather than you know we're obviously all inspired by other visual artists too, mm-hmm. and their styles work their way into how we evolve, but. I find a lot just from music and not just like I'm drawing musicians, but even just the feel of it and and a film even, you know, when you look at it from like the visual artist point of view, you could almost see films in snapshots, Mm -hmm. in stills. And that translates into a drawing or a painting. So it is, it does like when you're thinking about another form of art while you're doing one form... The potential for something new to to grow out of that is really good. Speaking of screenshots, I actually Mm -hmm. discovered something uh, recently. If you look up uh, screenshot or like movie palettes, color palettes, that's exactly what comes up is screenshots for movies within the color palette underneath Mm. with like the little squares of color. And I actually used that for a couple paintings just when I wasn't sure what kind of color palette I wanted to use, Mm -hmm. you know? I kind of looked, just kind of typed that in, and I was able to look through like even some of my favorite movies and be like, oh, those colors are perfect, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So that, I found, is a great tool, and combining, you know, two mediums like that. Yeah. So in other words, it is, the this color palette is t- sh- telling you the name of the color that's in the shot? It's not saying the direct name. It just has, uh, like, little squares of color underneath. Okay. But uh, if you use a pro, like the program I use on my iPad for digital art is called Procreate. Okay. And uh, if you take that image and put it in there, you can literally drag and find out what that color is. 
So that's really great for me because I can just, you know, save the picture, pop it in the program, and be like, oh, that's what the color is. Gotcha. So. No, that's handy. Mm -hmm. That's real handy. Mm -hmm. So, like, is there specific, you mentioned a few, but is there a couple more mo films that, like, really have inspired art of yours over the years? I mean, I actually wrote a couple things okay. down. Okay, awesome. Because sometimes I forget things. Um... Miyazaki, anything by Studio Ghibli, Miyazaki, if you're familiar. Mm -hmm. Really anything by that man, I'm all about. And he just makes such fantastic films, and they're so inspirational, and my son loves them now, so we're watching okay. them all the time. Um, other two movies that have really inspired me, I don't know if you've ever seen Secret of the Kells. I haven't. That is a fantastic animated film, um, and they, the same people that did that one did a second film called Song of the Sea, which mm -hmm. is in a similar style, and it's, it's very, it's a very unique style. I'm not even sure how to describe it. Um, I'd highly recommend them to anyone, even like kids, mm -hmm. like they're great for everybody, but visually they're stunning, absolutely mm -hmm. stunning. Okay. Do you gravitate towards animated films? I don't know if I gravitate towards animated films per se. It's just kind of indie films, things that don't mm. usually pop up in mainstream. But at the same time, I also like a lot of sci-fi and fantasy, like the alien movies. Right, yeah, yeah. Big fan right. of aliens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... Um, like I said, Labyrinth, Dark Crystal, you know. I'm also a sucker for a good action movie like Speed. Oh, yeah. So. Well, those, yeah, no, those Classics. are like staples. Yeah. yeah. You need those. <laughs> have you ever heard of an animated films? Have you heard of Ralph Bakshi? Ralph Bakshi? No. Okay. So, real quick, he's mainly known for... Um, he did a version of Lord of the Rings... Oh, yes, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was like a, just around that same time, Fire and Ice, mm -hmm. the film, and Wizards. Okay, so like those in this weird way have become, not that it's weird, it is what it is, but those have become like his most popular in terms of mm -hmm. mainstream pictures. But before that, he was doing, um, well, he did the film version of Fritz the Cat. If, oh, yeah, if I've seen Fritz the Cat. Okay, so that was sort of his his style prior to getting into more of the fantasy world. So he did Fritz the Cat, another one called Heavy Traffic. Mm -hmm. And those old ones are like very fun animation style because he came from Disney. Mm -hmm. He was like a Disney animator who jumped ship, mm -hmm. which a couple artists did as the 60s rolled on. And he started, I think Fritz the Cat was his first one, and then he did a bunch of other ones in that similar style. Hey Good Looking was another one, which was like 1950s doo-wop vibe mm -hmm. to it. But um, yeah, I definitely recommend checking out his movies, if for nothing else than the art. Yeah. Because you do kind of see, he still had that Disney thing going, and the whole time he's sort of just like flipping off Disney with his, mm -hmm. with his art as he's moving more towards... The style that became in Lord of the Rings. Well, Wizards was fantastic. Yeah. And anything Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, I'm a fan of. Okay. So, big Tolkien fan, so. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> but yeah, he's he's a fun one. He's still working today. He just did a movie about Coney Island, like an animated short about Coney oh, Island. that's awesome. So, yeah, he's definitely one I'd recommend checking out if you get the chance. Because I've drawn a lot of um, inspiration, more so... For the backgrounds mm -hmm. of cartoons and animated films. Because a lot of the time... Like, I think a good background in an animated film... Just, you don't notice it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't totally stand out. But when you separate it, you're like, damn, that's actually pretty good. You know? Yeah, it's, it's surprising how much work goes into the backgrounds of movies. I remember... When I was a kid, something that actually inspired me was there was a making of Sleeping Beauty, the Disney animated film, okay. and I remember them showing how they made all the backgrounds, and you know, I was a little kid, I was probably like seven or eight, and I was blown away by how much work went into the backgrounds, mm -hmm. and ever since then, I always made sure to notice you know, the backgrounds a little bit more just because of how much work went into them. Yeah. I had, um, like, Instagram recommends pages to you. Mm -hmm. 
And there's a complete page on Instagram dedicated to the backgrounds of Scooby-Doo cartoons, the old ones. And it's nothing I even ever That's thought awesome. of. That's awesome. And when I'm going through, like, I'll send you a link to the page. Absolutely. Like, when I'm going through it, that was, like, the, what came to mind. I was saying before, like, damn, like, these backgrounds are really good. <laughs> you know? And they're just paintings mm -hmm. that just, that's all mm -hmm. they were. Excuse me, on the visual art side of things. Mm -hmm. Who are some visual artists that you're into, whether new or old? Uh, well, I really like uh, Brian Froud, who was the guy that did all the designs for Labyrinth Dark Crystal okay. and worked with Jim Henson for forever. Love right. all of his fantasy stuff. Absolutely. Um, I'm a big fan of Boris Grow, who inspired me to do a lot of the uh, skeletons that I have on my Instagram. Okay. Uh, he paints a lot of like giant, oh, menacing skeletons, but they're also kind of like menacingly cute in a strange okay. way. I don't know how to describe it. Kind of dark, futuristic kind of stuff, but very good painting. Um, uh, the Japanese artist Amano. He does a lot of the concept designs for the Final Fantasy video game series. Okay. Love his stuff. Um, it's super interesting. He always has lots of weird little details and swirly bits. And um, Jamie Hewitt as well, who you would probably know from like Gorillaz, the, okay. the band Gorillaz. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he did the whole design for the band and he also did the comic book Tank Girl. Okay. Who I'm a huge fan yeah. of Tank Girl, so... And he's probably influenced me the most, I think, just because I re always liked his style, and I collected, like, all the Tank Girl comics for a while. And nice. Big fan, so... Did you ever think about doing a comic book yourself? I'm constantly thinking about doing a comic <laughs> book, but I'm not the world's best writer, and I don't have a lot of patience for that, okay. so I don't know if I'll ever do that. But it is constantly in the back of my mind, yes. It's a lot, and you have to come up with some kind of story, and you gotta stick to it, and you gotta, you know, keep the character looking the same, and yeah. there's a lot that goes into comic books. Yeah. Have you ever heard of, um, it, start, it was originally a comic book or a graphic novel called God Killer? God Killer, no. Okay. Well, I, I had no clue what this was, but I found a DVD, mm -hmm. and... I was just really curious, like, okay, how, what's, what's this about? Why is there a DVD mm -hmm. in a comic book? And they did this really neat, I believe it's on YouTube now, but the way, like, they animated a comic book in this mm -hmm. really, like, simplistic way, mm -hmm. but it doesn't take anything away from it. Like, they added some effects. It's pretty much like a post-apocalyptic kind of storyline, where currency is blood, it's that whole that whole vibe. Well, it has my attention now. Okay. <laughs> no, it's pretty awesome, and the art is really cool. I've, it's I've not been able to find like the actual graphic novels of it because hmm. I think when it came out, it was one of those things that nobody knew about, nobody really paid attention to mm -hmm. or cared about, and then like the right people got a hold of it, and then it kind of like cultishly blew up. Right. So any copies of it are being hoarded now. Right. Or they're a lot of money. Last I checked, it changed. <laughs> I'm always a sucker for a good apocalypse story, so... No, it's it's pretty awesome. Like, there's several volumes of it. I had only seen volume one. Mm -hmm. But I was telling a friend about this a couple of years ago, and I was able to find the whole thing mm -hmm. on YouTube. So it's pretty cool, and it like kind of opened my mind to an idea that I never thought of, which mm -hmm. like animating like the drawings never move really mm -hmm. you know it's not like they're animating the drawings from the book mm -hmm. but yet it still has like this really neat flow to it and it works in a way that i never personally would have thought of yeah and again that's another example of you know combining different mediums exactly which i think is awesome yeah yeah and it's fun you know i i i like to kind of like trip up a viewer to be like, wait a minute, what is that? Is it a painting? Like, what? You yeah. know, and it seems like, you know, the style that you already had, like you said, it blends very well between the two, mm -hmm. which is fun. Well, I think just from reading comic books and stuff, that graphic style just always stood out to me. So, yeah, that's kind of where I kind of morphed into. So. Gotcha. 
Well, here's like an interesting thought that I'll, I'll throw at you, um, which is it's something that I've been kind of beating this drum for a while now, where, as you mentioned, reading comic books influence your art. Mm-hmm. So on this show, I've interviewed a number of like older artists, mm-hmm. and I would look at their work, and there was just something about it that was different, mm-hmm. and I could never put more my finger on it. Mm-hmm. And are you into like anime? Mm-hmm. I don't, okay. So, it sort of clicked with me looking at mainly, like, these older artists' drawings. And I mm-hmm. just thought about it. They had no anime in their life. Yeah. And our generation, you know, it was everywhere. And especially, like, I know, like, for me, beginning, you know, like, you're into certain shows. And for the beginning artist, anime is an easy style to grasp. I watched a lot of Dragon Ball Z growing up. As did I. (laughs) (laughs) Big Dragon Ball Z Uh fan. So that's definitely influenced me too in some way. (laughs) No, and like I really feel like it has slipped in to like our generation's mindset of art. Not even on purpose. It just Mm -hmm. is the the way the snowball rolls. You know, but they didn't have that. That's true. And I, their, their people, like their caricatures... Their sketches are more rounded. Their faces are more rounded, which is not always the way anime is. You know? Yeah. For the, like, and I'm to me, like, mainstream Mm -hmm. anime. Like you said, Dragon Ball Z or the kids who watch Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Like, that style was the very, you know, Mm -hmm. hard, uh, like, angled faces. Right, right. The eyes, the noses, all that kind of thing. And,. I don't know, like, this is just my crackpot theory. No, I could definitely see that the older generation is definitely more the, the Disney generation, where yeah. it's all they really had to go off of. Right. As in, like, I guess in the 80s and 90s, anime started coming over here more, and then just yeah. kind of started weaving its way through our culture. Mm-hmm. And now that's just everywhere. Yeah. No, and it, it uh, inadvertently or whatever, it did, I think, change the course mm-hmm. of the way... Because you, when you start on something, you know, like a be- beginning artist, and you're drawing anime, like that's mm-hmm. that then becomes part of you. Everything mm-hmm. you draw is in the next drawing in one way. Shape, absolutely, or absolutely. So yeah, um, did you ever watch when it was on uh, Cowboy Bebop? That one, one? of my absolute favorites. All okay. the jazz and this, you know, yeah. space cowboys and all that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. stuff. Loved Cowboy Bebop. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, not Dragon Ball Z, Cowboy Bebop really definitely stuck with me, had more of an emotional connection for me just because, you know, it really stood out with with the songs, the, the titles, the way it was animated, the philosophies behind each episode. It really yeah. stood out, especially at that time when there wasn't a lot of different animes that did that. You know, because you had, like, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, you mm-hmm. know, kind of very pop, mainstream. Yeah. You know, a lot of yelling, <laughs> powering up. And Cowboy <laughs> Bebop came came along like the artsy cousin and yeah. really definitely influenced me big time, for sure. I actually have that on my list, too, of stuff. Oh, yeah. Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad it came up then, organically. That's cool. I would, on Instagram, I'd recommend checking out artist Don Stetner. He was on the show, mm-hmm. and he's pretty awesome. And he was the one who got those wheels turning in my head. Like, what is it about his art that feels like it's not of this time? Mm-hmm. And, like, it bugged me of, like, what what the deal was. You know, it's a really interesting observation for sure. So, to jump back to the, to the show really quick, mm-hmm. um, how far along are you in your 22 22- pieces i'm done nice i am done they are all framed up i finished yesterday actually cool and then had my little celebratory date night with my husband so it was i was very happy they're all sitting you know in my my basement and they're all lined up finished looking beautiful i couldn't be happier i also finished a couple traditional pieces in acrylic that are gonna hang up as well okay cool that I had a little bit of time to do, so I did those. Um, they kind of go with the Arcana series. They're kind of that same kind of vibe, so I thought they would fit. 
um, with a little bit of metallic, you know, paint in there as well, just to help keep it all flowing together. Cool. Um, the cards actually, you briefly mentioned Pokemon. Uh, yeah. Remember when Pokemon was big and they came out with like the cool, like shiny cards, like all the kids went nuts over, oh, yeah. like the holographic cards. Yep. That's, yep. I made a joke that that's what they're kind of like because <laughs> I put the metallic paint and you like hold them in the right light and they're all shiny and stuff. Oh, that's and awesome though. I made a joke. They're like the popular Pokemon cards. <laughs> hey, whatever it takes, that might get a few a few people in the door. That's true. That's so, true. So whatever it takes. The the other pieces outside of the the tarot pieces. Mm -hmm. um, what are those like? like? There's there's one bigger piece. It's uh, the same kind of like teal. It's the probably a darker teal than that uh, the girl painting okay. that you were talking about. But I really love teal. I always tend to go for teal. I don't know why. I really like that color. But it's a um, a hairless cat with three eyes. Okay. So I, I named him the familiar because, you know, tarot cards kind of have that weird spiritual thing. And, you know, with Wicca kind of goes into that a little bit. So like a familiar, a three-eyed spiritual cat, I thought that would kind of fit. And then I also did two pieces. One is a bumblebee with a big sun above it. And the other one is a moth with a big moon above it. Okay. You know, kind of nice. like a daylight and... Uh, you know, moonlight thing, uh, kind of a Luna Moss type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, again, with the, the teal and the gold. So nice. that it really pop. So what is it, like, from your point of view, what is it about using those bold colors, those bold, solid colors that you like? Honestly, I always tend to paint stuff that I would hang up in my house. Okay. I just go with what I like and like, oh, I would totally hang that in my house. And I figure, well, if I like it, somebody else might like it. And I always like stuff that's vibrant and pops. And maybe it's because I am constantly wearing black. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like I have to just get all the color out somehow. But, uh... Yeah, no, I, can, I know what you mean. <laughs> so the show is November 7th. And 8th. Yes. Which I imagine is a weekend. Yes. Saturday okay. and Sunday. Um, are, how will people get to it? Are there tickets? What's Yeah, you what's can purchase uh, tickets to reserve a spot. Um, I believe, depending on how many people reserve spots, we may allow a couple walk-ins. Okay. Um, but ideally, go to the page on Facebook, reserve your spot for either. There's uh, two showings on Saturday, two showings on Sunday. Yeah, I'll be there. Courtney it will be there, of course. Um, and uh, ideally, that is what I would do. Though, if you just happen to be in town, by all means, stop by. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're trying to be safe with social, social distancing and everything. So we're trying not to, you know, put too many people into that space. You know, it's a small space. You've right. seen it. It's not yeah. huge. So we're trying to be conscious of that. Yeah, well, I would say... Anybody who's interested, when I had my show there, they did a fantastic job mm -hmm. of keeping everybody limited and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, if everybody just kind of just works together and just chills out and just does what they got to do, <laughs> everything will be fine. Yeah. Um, now, I also see in the ad that they're doing a tour, too, of the art. Yeah, bit. they're, they're going to have, like, a little walkthrough uh, and just kind of talk about it a little bit because, you know, tarot cards do go in an order, so okay. they do kind of have a little bit of a number, you know, it starts with the full, ends with the world card. So I think we are going to have like a little walk through and we might talk about a few of the different cards and each card will have a label with its individual meanings underneath okay. it. So, nice. you know, anybody can just kind of look and if a card speaks to them, you know, they, they might want it. Uh, the full card, uh, just because I know off the top of my head, is the kind of optimistic new beginnings card. Okay. You know, yeah. being it's the first card in the deck. And then you have, like, the strength card, you know, which obviously stands for strength, but also subtle strength, because okay. it pictures the, the maiden taming the beast, sort of. So it's kind of more reflective of subtle strength in her respect, and then the bear which I used a bear. Traditionally, it's a lion, but I thought we live in the Poconos. A bear yeah. <laughs> makes more sense. <laughs> right. You know, symbolizes, you know, strength. So, and then, you know, there's so many cards, and they all have different meanings. There's the death card, you know, the the devil, uh, the world, the chariot. There's a lot. 
There's a lot. I think people, I think everyone will be able to find at least one card that resonates with them. Nice. Cool. And will the pieces be for sale? Yes, everything will be for sale. Okay, nice. Yeah. And of your paintings, um, if people see them online, do you offer prints too? How's I do. I do cool. offer prints. Yeah, yeah. I just put my website up. We're still working on it because I'm not the best with that. So it's a little yeah. slow going, but I do have my yeah. website up. Uh, it's heatherleeillustrations.com. Okay. Uh, probably within the next two weeks, I'll be updating it with the more traditional pieces and more prints. And obviously after the show, I'll have all the tarot cards up there for purchase as well. And people can just let me know which ones they want, and they will get it. Nice. Mm -hmm. And where else can people find your work and what you're doing? It's mostly my website and Instagram. Uh, my Facebook, I sometimes post on that. I really have to make an art Facebook. I keep uh, dragging my feet with that a little bit, but I'll uh, stop procrastinating and just do that. <laughs> it's just about throwing as much at the wall yep. as possible. And just like... What I perceived as being irritating to people or annoying, mm -hmm. of like, look at my art, look at my art, <laughs> I'm not that guy. But that's sort of, especially with Instagram, it's so easy to get buried. Yeah, you do kind of have to post a lot. And I've been trying to, not recently, but I, because I was so busy trying to get all the tarot cards done. But before yeah. I was trying to post at least like once or twice a week just to kind of get some kind of a routine up, but even so, it's still hard because you get distracted or something. I have a three-year-old, oh, I want a popsicle, oh, I need to drink something, mm -hmm. then you forget about it. You know, life. So, yeah, you know, just like, life in general it just gets distracting, so you forget. But I'm going to, again, now that the tarot cards are done, try to start posting more regularly on my Instagram, and then I'll make a, make a Facebook as well. Cool, and the Instagram handle again is? I think it's, it's Heather Lee Illustrations. Yeah, it's the same as the website. Okay. I'm so okay. bad at talking about myself. No, I, I get it. it. It took me like 10 episodes just to be able to host this damn thing <laughs> like a human, you know? So so it's all good, but I really appreciate you coming on the show. Absolutely. It was fun to talk to you. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to the show. I'm definitely going to be there. Great, so great. Yeah, I'm very excited. Very, very excited. Do you have any um, plans for your next your next thing? What you're going to do once the tarot card? I'm not really sure. I might work on some more traditional pieces for a while now that my son's in school and okay. not trying to help constantly. I had a painting. I actually have paintings up at Down River Brewery right now and some prints okay. over uh, down here in Stroudsburg. I don't know if you've ever been there. I haven't, but They're, where is it? Uh, it's over in Stroudsburg. It's, you know where that metal overhang thing is? And they have that little indoor section yes, yes yeah yes. it's it's right in there or you can actually enter from quaker alley as well okay um it's a fantastic brewery it's the guy that owns banters hard ciders okay he opened up a brewery as well and he has a bunch of my stuff there at the moment and one of the pieces that a lot of people commented on was i had a painting of bird skull flowers okay. it's basically these pretty pink flowers with like little bird skulls in them hmm and a lot of people commented on those, and eventually it sold. So I might do some more bird skull paintings. And then nice. I also just did a picture of a hummingbird skeleton that everyone really liked. So I might do uh, another piece with a hummingbird skeleton, so we'll see. But as far as any major series like the tarot cards, I think I'm going to chill with that for a minute. Okay. Just because it was stressful enough trying to yeah. get all 22 of those cards done in that you know length of time so i think i'm going to take a little break and maybe just kind of vibe and do whatever for a while exactly and just no, you know is there any like way into the future if this show goes well is there anything that you may one day make the complete deck yeah, I do eventually. I would like to make a complete deck, just to say that I've, de I've done it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking, I actually was thinking about that the other day, and I thought that maybe, you know, after the show and after I relax for a bit, I'll just kind of go suit by suit, okay. you know, just so, you know, that I'm not looking at, like, the rest of the cards. I'll just kind of right. break it into little sections, mm -hmm. and then, you know, maybe in a few years I'll maybe have a whole deck. We'll see. Yeah, it's definitely like <laughs> a long-term project. Yeah. But it would be awesome, and, and probably now more than ever, people are into it. Mm -hmm. So, and I've seen, like, I've seen some tarot decks with amazing art, 
I'm seeing some tarot decks with real shitty art. Yeah. So it would be awesome to see your stuff in a tarot deck. Absolutely. In other yeah. words. We'll, we'll see how uh, how motivated I am, but the plan, yeah, no is, pressure. the plan is to eventually have a whole deck, but again, we'll see. It might be a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No pressure, <laughs> I'm just saying. All right. Well, thanks again, Heather. I appreciate you doing the show. Oh, no problem. It was problem. great talking with you. Absolutely. And um, yeah, November 7th and 8th, the Create and Be Art Studio in Stroudsburg, and there's more stuff on Instagram, Heather Lee Illustrations, and your website again? HeatherLeeIllustrations.com. All right, folks, there goes another episode of the Planet Shivers podcast. Thank you for listening or watching or both. I am and always will be Albert Shivers. Thank you to Heather Lee for coming on and chatting. Don't forget, her art show is coming up this weekend, November 7th and 8th, at the Create and Be Art Studio. You can find all the information on their Facebook page. You can find this podcast episode and a whole lot more on all major podcast platforms, as well as YouTube with video accompaniment. Thank you guys so much for listening and supporting the show. Don't forget to check out the new episodes of Insomnia Art on YouTube and check out the Albert Shivers Patreon page. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week and it doesn't drive you crazy. Take care of yourself. Take care of somebody else. Next week on the show, Kelly Ann Walsh is going to be on. Her and I have a very fun conversation about acting, about film, and really about life. We go in all sorts of fun directions. You, I know you, you're not going to want to miss it. So we'll talk to you next week.